welcome to the special Monday edition of DC Today. Uh, the market is closed. Uh, I am here in New York City, and I am going to walk through with you as much as I can from today's written DC Today. We'll see what time allows. But it was kind of a long one. Um, I had a lot to say, and I'm kind of happy with how it turned out. And there you go. Um, so first of all, check out Dividend Cafe from Friday if you missed it. I love these dividend cafes that talk about dividends. And obviously, there's the video, the podcast, and the written version. Um, in the DC Today, today we have the links for a couple of the, the latest um, uh, media clips and, and things like that. You know, that's, we always try to keep those things updated. We put them on our YouTube page. So just want to keep you abreast of all of the different uh, things going on. In terms of market action today, after kind of a flat open in futures last night, and then a um, rally uh, pre-market this morning, the market opened 100 points, got up as much as about 200, and then zigged and zagged down. Uh, throughout the day, it ended up closing up 75, 76 points. Um, so off of its highs, but still in positive territory. S&P was up 63 basis points. The NASDAQ was up 82 basis points. So ongoing movement higher, even as bonds sold off a little bit. Now, not a ton, but the 10-year yield was up 2.8 basis points. So you got the yield going up to 4.33%. Uh, remember, yields going higher means bond prices going lower. And that uh, would indicate to me that we're getting pretty close to the territory where I have to think that the bond yields start to cut into equity prices. I am surprised it hasn't already, frankly. I would have thought uh, holding it here over four and a quarter would be enough. But maybe it's got to get up to four and a half till it makes a difference. But we shall see. In the meantime, the technology sector. Um, has really seen its breadth weaken significantly, but not its total return. And, and so what I mean by breadth weakening is that the, right now there's 61% of companies that are above their 50-day moving average. So close to, but not quite, half are below their 50-day average. That number had been 95% a couple of months ago. So there isn't as much broad participation in the good things going on on the tech side. It's more a couple particular companies. I think you know who those are. Um, and yet the overall market's hung in there. I've been talking about its improving breadth. It, it's improving off of almost complete and total lack of breadth. It isn't like this market has broadened out a ton, but relative to where it was, it has. But what I would point out is that copper is breaking out to new highs, which I think speaks to some internal strength in industrials, cyclicals, some of the capex oriented type companies as you see copper um, moving to new highs today top performing sector by a wide margin was communication services uh, healthcare and real estate were each down two basis points so basically flat everything else was up right behind communication services which was pretty much carried by one stock you had consumer staples which was up almost uh one percent so interesting day there um there's a chart in DC today showing how much as of late, let's say since the Fed started hiking rates, that the appetite for treasury bonds has increased and improved from households and from what we would call real economic actors such as banks and insurance companies and, and how much uh, corporate type buyers and how much it's dropped from what we'd consider non-rate sensitive actors like the Fed and like foreign sovereign wealth, like uh, foreign governments, basically, um, their own sovereign capital. Uh, their appetite has declined and appetite for uh, individuals and corporate buyers has increased, which is what you'd expect in higher rates. Uh, so if we were to convert to more yield insensitive environment, that it's just it's a night and day situation in every aspect of the bond market. Um, okay, what else do we want to cover? Public policy. It looks like the White House and congressional Republicans are negotiating. It is not a done deal as of press time for a full year spending bill for Homeland Security. This could stave off a kind of short term sequester situation or shutdown. They had been talking about having to do another continuing resolution. 
uh, border policy issues and then the funding around all this stuff is, is tricky because it's not only very um, amplified politically, uh, but it's messy and, and yet it's also amplified and messy to not get it done. And so we'll see kind of in the next 24 hours where this goes. Uh, but, you know, even if the White House and the House come to an agreement, it still has to go to the Senate and they, they could procedurally delay it here for at least a few days. Uh, the Department of Justice has begun what, they're, begun what they're calling a preliminary scrutiny of the Nippon Steel acquisition of U.S. Steel. And of course, their jurisdiction would be on antitrust grounds, which is just uh, beyond my comprehension to even say it is such a stupid argument. Uh, but they are not in a full-blown opposition yet, so I should be somewhat charitable. Um, and then where it will go next is CFIUS, which is the State Department, where they look for national security concerns. So, you know, uh, people can say this stuff with a straight face. Uh, we'll see what happens with all of it. Obviously a very political situation. Industrial production came out on Friday. It was up 0.1% in February. No change had been expected. But the, uh, underneath the headline, it was pretty good numbers. You, manufacturing with auto and without auto picked up a bit. Utilities had fallen, but mining output increased. Um, another just anecdotal comment. U.S. GDP uh, expectations have been revised upward multiple times here for full year 2024, for, you know, Q4, 3, 2, 1. In the meantime, I'm looking at European countries, particularly Germany, as their GDP expectations are being revised downwards. They were expected to be low and have been now presumed to be lower. U.S. was expected to be a bit higher and has now been presumed to go even higher from there. So it's an interesting divergence in economic expectations in Europe. The NAHB home builder sentiment for March came out and it had moved back into positive territory. It's at the highest level it's been since July of last year, not exactly ancient history, but prospective buyer traffic is still very, very low. But there was pretty decent improvement in current situation, present um, situation, they call it, and, and current expectations. There was a pretty big announcement on Friday of settlement of a class action lawsuit involving the National Association of Realtors, whereby uh, they're going to pay over $400 million of fines and standard commissions will not be uh, tolerated or, or, excuse me, mandated. They're going to have more flexibility around residential real estate commission structure. We'll see what happens with that. So yeah, the Fed meets all day tomorrow. Uh, they'll announce, obviously, that they're not hiking rates or cutting rates on Wednesday. That's 100% priced into futures. But we'll see what the dot plot shows for their plans or expectations for the rest of the year. And then I would point out that the Wall Street Journal ran a story saying that some of Trump's economic advisors are recommending either Kevin Marsh or Kevin Hassett to him to be the new Fed chair if President Trump is elected. Um both of which, by the way, are people I know, uh, Kevin Hassett, I know quite well and think very highly of. Um, but whether or not President Trump has them on his list or he's just hearing those names and someone's leaking it to the journal, I, you know, who knows? But that's interesting. Um, we most certainly know President Trump would be seeking to replace Chairman Powell. Uh, it, but again, all that, you know, is just dependent on what's going to happen at the election in November. A long way to go. Bank of Japan's uh, uh, policy decision will come out tomorrow. They may, may raise interest rates for the first time since before the iPhone was invented. They have not raised rates since uh, early 2007. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, what else? So futures are now indicating a Fed funds rate of 4.5% at the end of the year. That is 75 to 100 basis points lower than it is now. Uh, at the beginning of the year, the the futures curve, the forward, was indicating 3.9%. So 60 basis points has come back into the curve, but this still represents 75 lower than where we are now. U.S. produced 12.9 million barrels per day of oil last year. That is almost a third more than Russia. It is a third more than Saudi Arabia. Stunning statistic, and you can't really expect to hear about it because you have two political parties for totally different reasons that don't want to advertise it. It's 
just surreal. Oil, by the way, closed up uh, over 2%, now back firmly above $82 a barrel. A wonderful against doomsdayism today with a few different bullet points I want you to check out at the dctoday.com. Um, and a thoughtful question from Ask David based on last uh, Friday's Dividend Cafe. But I have to, for time reasons, leave it there. So uh, a full boat here today in the DC Today. Appreciate uh, you sticking with me. And I will be writing what's on David's mind tomorrow. Brian will be with you recording. And we'll look forward to another day. Thanks so much for watching, listening, and reading the DC Today. Mm -hmm.